Hi fellow reefers, this is Ash aka Mr. Khan coming at you from Toronto. Today's video I'll be sharing my filtration system with you guys. What I do to maintain this aquarium and what's involved in my filtration system, how much water change, how many gallons of water do I change my water uh, to keep this system thriving and uh, growing further so in the beginning I used to have an under the cabinet sump an Aquian Proflex here which I removed and moved my filtration system downstairs into my basement uh, as you can see I have two corner overflows right there is the first one and right here is the second one each overflow has one return and uh, one overflow on each side so i got two returns from both ends and two one inch overflows in addition to this i have a frac tank which also has one inch overflow and a three quarter inch return this is all plumbed together to the same sump which is in the basement and as you can see from the piping here these are my return lines and I control them using the ball valves this is my overflow coming from one side of the aquarium this is my another overflow and here is my third overflow so these are my three overflows going down into my basement through my joist uh, luckily my joists were running uh, pretty opposite to the sum so I do not have to drill anything except drilling the floor and just the pipes were put on straight across and this is the return line that comes from the pump I will take you guys downstairs shortly uh, the return line has a T so one inch one inch goes to the two corner overflows of my aquarium and a three quarter inch to the uh, frac tank this extra hole is for running the ethernet cable to my apex controller as well as a usb uh, not usb an aquabus cable from uh, usb fire wire it's a 50 foot cable that i ran so what i'm doing is i have connected it to my um, wxm module that controls my radions and my two mp40 quiet drives uh, this also will enable me down the road if I need to add an EB8 for my display I can always add one because I have the USB and the Aquabus cable coming in through my basement sump. So as you can see the floor the joists are running this way so the pipe is going straight down under the floor right here's the basement as we walk down the road if you could see the pipes so here are the four pipes three overflows one return the ethernet cable and the black wire is the aquabus cable i will patch this thing up uh, this summer i'm going to be doing all this i'm going to create a bulkhead here so it's all hidden so here are the three overflow pipes and inch and a half return and that enters my furnace room and here is my fish room, aka furnace room, boiler room, you could say anything. And what you see here is a 125 gallon basement sump. As I said, this sump is fed by three one inch overflow pipes into the first chamber. 
where the water flows straight in it and has the cyperax matrix. Then the water goes over and enters the second chamber which is the four inch filter socks chamber where I have three filter socks. From here on the water goes under, enters from underneath into this chamber which is the mechanical filtration chamber. Here you will find my skimmer. It's an old skimmer, Aquamedic 1000 multi SL. And as you can see from the gut, it's doing its job. This skimmer has been with me since day one and it was rated for 250 gallons. My overall water volume is 220 gallons, including the sump and um, the frac tank and my display. So, and it's still doing the bang on the job. And then here on you have a chair reactor this one has my uh, the cyperx matrix i had lying around so i just added up in here the second reactor which is the false band 150 holds gfo and the third reactor is just the granular uh, the, the uh, granular carbon gac uh, you know, just to keep some dissolved organics because I got leather and softies and uh, you know, kind of mixed with. And then the main chamber is my 34 gallon, I'm sorry, 36 gallon refugium. As you can see, the, uh, the cheetah is really nice and green and healthy. And I want to show you guys something, some critters. I think these are some nudie branches. If you could see closely here, uh, right there, the orange see that not sure what this is but this is really really cool stuff what you could see when you have a refugium like this where you could you know watch it it's just a new uh, whole new system right there is another one so it seems like these are some kind of newbie branches and uh, you know limited to my uh, refugium only I can only imagine how much pods uh, this refugium would be holding on so that's a 36 gallon refugium and then here is the last chamber, which is the return chamber. I have an external pump, which is the reflow Barracuda. And it has a one inch input and a one inch output. The output, as you can see, goes from right there. And it gets a manifold that, uh, you know, the, that feeds my three reactors. And then from there on, right here, is the pipe that goes back up to the aquarium that I showed you guys. Uh, the refugium is lit by three Home Depot lights, uh, pretty basic bulbs, uh, the spiral bulbs that they sell for four or five bucks. Uh, and uh, yeah, the aquarium sits on a stand that was built right on the side here because of the size of the stand. I could not build it outside and move it because of the space limitation. So I had to build a stand right here. Uh, don't ask me, it was a tough job, but uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm happy that it worked out. And then right underneath is my water chain station. So I have two brood cans. Uh, I believe these are 44 gallon brood cans. This is my RODI container, and this is my salt water container. Uh, these are all controlled using the ball valves and then uh, using a mag 9 pump which is connected to my uh, apex as well so when i'm ready to do my water change or mix my water all i do is just open up a couple of valves turn the pump on and the water gets transferred to another chamber gets mixed up and then when i'm ready to put the water back into my uh, you know doing my water changes i can just pump the water back into my uh, my uh, refugium or my sump uh, the way how i do my water change is uh, as you can see there are two bulkheads this one feeds the pump the return pump this one is for my water change so when i'm doing my water change i will turn off my system my return pump will be off so the water level here is the maximum water level will raise and stop right there and i have calculated 34 gallon from here to here this is how much i usually do my water change and um, so once the water level stops i will just come here and open up this wall the water will drain straight into the sink 
So from here, the water goes down here and I turn off my wall. Once the water is drained down, I will just turn up my uh, water change pump and the water gets pumped back in. And once the water level reaches back here, my water change is complete. And that's when I will turn my reflow pump back on and the system is, uh, you know, back in uh, the action. Uh, the whole system is pumped by just one pump and the second pump is just for my skimmer here. Uh, in addition, I have a very small pump at the back end there that just to flow, you know, not to let the detritus settle down here. Other than that, that pump is, you know, basically not doing anything else than that. Uh, down here is my 20 gallon Clockwasser reservoir. I do not use this as my uh, auto top off. Instead, I supply this using uh, a four stage uh, Jibao auto dozer right there. Uh, the reason being I know exactly how many ml I am dosing per day. I have uh, distributed 230 ml every hour uh, for the span of 24 hours. So I roughly around 5,000 uh, 5, ml a day. And it comes down to pretty much close to my water evaporation which is 2 gallons to 2.5 gallons a day on my system. Um, my auto di runs separate i'm sorry my um, auto top off runs separate jbj ato and uh, the pump sits into my auto di so whatever uh, my cock washer cannot keep up with the ato will uh, take care of the uh, the level of the water uh, because this is a furnace room i do not want to take chances i also have a dehumidifier that constantly runs 24 hours and as you can see i have the hose connected to the dehumidifier so the hose drains constantly into the drain this way the air is uh, you know nice and clean here also i have um, a small little fan from Korean tire that runs 24 7 as well that that keeps the uh, the air circulated here really nice down here is my rodi five stage i added a second uh, uh, membrane and here's my display this is my apex controller. Up here is where my EVA is connected, and that's where the uh, wire from uh, the, the aqua overs cable that comes from the top is connected as well. So I connected the aqua WXM module from here all the way upstairs. Here is my small little shelf where I keep my supplies. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, having the sink has always been uh, a blessing every time that I need to do any water changes or uh, every time when I need to clean up the skimmer cup or uh, change the media in the reactors all I have to do is just close off this valve take the reactor out change the media put it back in and the pump is back in action same thing with the skimmer and uh, yeah I do not have to drill any hole in my joist when I ran this pipe because uh, uh, I wanted to make sure that I am not compromising the structure of the house so if you can see my joists are running this way and my aquarium is on the other side of this this uh, uh, joist so the, the pipes pretty much run straight across parallel to the joist so I do not have to do anything just run the pipe straight across and then bring it down from my other side of the of the wall into my furnace room and that has pretty much uh, been uh, you know uh, the video basically so i'm hoping uh, you guys like the video i'm able to give you guys uh, you know some idea of how i maintain my aquarium what i do what i do in terms of water changes how i do my water changes uh, maybe going forward i'm planning to do water change every weekly right now i'm doing uh, every two to three weeks and that's why I'm doing a 34 gallon water chain but when I switch to every weekly I'll probably be doing maybe 20 gallon a day uh, 20 gallon a weekend sorry my bad uh, in terms of dosing I'm only dosing calcium because my alkalinity is uh, you know in check using the cock washer I don't dose magnesium I just top it up magnesium once in a month maybe and uh, my calcium stays 450 to 480 parts per million. My alkalinity stays between 8 and 9 uh, dKH. And I try to keep my magnesium 
close to around 1400 to 1450 parts per million so that's pretty much it guys thanks